What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Dave's Daily Dives, where I dig in the charts, take a look at the day's actions, and then I give you five Zach's Rank number one strong buy stocks that are on the move. So an action-packed agenda, as always. Let's get into it, but before I get into the nitty the nitty gritty, I want to talk about Apple. And I got my Apple chart up here, and I say that the bearish divergence strikes again. Blah! What I mean by the bearish divergence is the difference between what's happening in the Chaikin money flow, which is negative to the downside, and what's happening in the stock price, which is sort of a positive accumulation here. So that really can't coexist forever. And when you find this sort of bearish divergence, as they say, that's when it's getting a little top heavy. So Apple reported earnings today. It's down percent and a half in Apple hour in after hours, not Apple hours, but after hours. Uh, so just something to keep an eye on. We're looking for your through your charts. Take a quick look at this Chaikin money flow. See if there's any bearish divergence. Okay, so why don't we get started? Well, I guess I'm already started, but let's look at the bigger picture here at the S&P 500. So still got my big fibs up here from the February lows to the March highs. And then the trend lines that I drew from the tops, which broke on through. And then now over the course of the last week, absolutely nothing. Just sideways action. One, two, three, four, five days, six days, nothing. Just kind of chopping back and forth. But this is typically what you see during earnings season. I can minimize this money flow right now. That's what you see during earnings. A lot of chopping back and forth. You know, one, it's like it's like a, the momentum going back and forth in a football game, right? One team drives down the field and scores. The other team drives down the field and scores. So it's the Bulls, it's the Bears going at it back and forth. This is typical of earnings season. That's the S&P 500. However, the NASDAQ, my friends, has fared a little bit better. Now, NASDAQ didn't have the same pattern where it's sort of, you know, lower highs that got put in and then break out from that channel. NASDAQ just doesn't care. The NASDAQ is unrelenting, and it just keeps on going up, and it has been going up. Um, bounce off the 50-day moving average here in December and again a couple weeks ago. Since then, just breaking out to new highs. Doesn't care. Uh, part, of the benefit, part of what pushed that along here is good earnings out of tech stocks. Now we have Apple that just came in after the bell today. Looks like they're gonna be down a little bit. And then you have, we had Alphabet or Google last week, which was good. Amazon, which was good. Um, but Amazon starting to come down a little bit, right? I mean, I don't know, let's it kind of cap this rally. Interestingly enough, the options market was pricing in, I think $36 on earnings, which made it 955s. And that's just about where it got yesterday uh, without getting over and the day after. And again, Here's our friend again. We were talking about Mr. Bearish Divergence popping up on the chart. Dun, dun, dun. That's my new Bearish Divergence face. Anyway, where you got the market coming higher and then this money flow dropping. So just something to note there on, like I said before, the NASDAQ is that you had a lot of good earnings there. Now we have the Apple news isn't so good. Tomorrow after the bell, we're going to have Facebook. We're also going to have Tesla, but you know we don't really care about Tesla right now. Um, we're, we're talking about really the Facebooks of the world and things like that. Okay, so there's the NASDAQ. Quick look in on the VIX, just wanna see, and there's nothing really here. So even though the market kind of stalled out a little bit today, still managed to finish in the green overall on the session, you know, back and forth on Capitol Hill about this new budget that's getting eviscerated and, you know, people, passing blame back and forth. They're fighting in Washington. What else is new? But the good news is the market doesn't care about it right now. So that's great. Uh, the VIX 1059 right here, VIX still very low, even though stocks remain very high. So um, nothing, nothing's developed out of this spike that we caught in the VIX since then. Um, checking in on the yen real briefly, because this was a point that I made last week is that we had this 38.2% retracement level on the yen. Now, why am I talking yen? Because the yen has a lot to do with 
risk off in general in the international currency market. So 38.2 on the move from this sort of intraday spike low on November 9th to the mid-December highs takes us right around 112, and that's exactly where we're at right now. So this is going to be the main event tonight during tonight's trading. Keep an eye on it. If this 112 level holds, then we should be looking lower here, kind of along this sort of lower trend line on the yen, okay, which means we're talking 108s, which is the 61.8% retracement level. That's where it could go. So keep an eye on that. If it does break out, it could, because right now we're testing the top of this trend line, right? So we got another sort of negative trend line, and it could be the same scenario that we saw with the S&P 500. If it breaks here, it's going here and higher, okay? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I think is going to happen. And then that's going to put a mighty damper on gold prices, my friends. And also would mean that the 10 year is going to run a little bit. So put that all in perspective when you're making your moves over the course of the next couple of days. All right. Now I've got five Zach's ranked number one strong buy stocks for you to take a look at. The first one is Aaron's Aaron, uh, ticker AAN. So these guys will basically lease you a couch, um, rent to own kind of stuff here. Um, so they have been in an interesting little pattern. Got a rally up from October on through to mid-December. Retraced almost perfectly to the 61.8% retracement. Have since gone higher. This gap is not going to get filled. This is not the type of gap that gets filled, I would argue, because we were already there. It's not like it's a loner on a chart that we've never seen before. We were already in there. So I don't think that's the type of gap that gets filled. But this is moving higher. Now, how much higher could this possibly go? Remember, Zach's ranked number one strong buy right now. That means that earnings estimates are starting to push in the positive direction. A really quick thing that you can do here is you got your Fibonacci retracement level. So go ahead and add another one. Now, remember, in the direction that we're going here, positive numbers are here. So we're going to use negative. So I'm going to use negative 23.6. Negative 23.6 here. Go ahead, press OK. Press Apply, and boom. That's exactly where shares are right now on the negative 23.6% retracement level. So that's sort of the first target. The next target you're going to go ahead and add is going to be the negative 38.2, which is, again, same that you do on the way down. 28, 32, 50, 61, 76, 100. Same thing you do on the way up. So if it could push through resistance here, which it looks like it will, the next target is 38.84, right around the corner. That was Aaron's ticker AAN. Next, we've got Agco. So they are in the farm equipment and machinery business. Another stock that had a nice little run since October, stalled out here a little bit later, sort of mid-February, and now we're running into some resistance here at the previous highs. So a lot going on, few days here trying to fight its way on through, not the most bullish of signs that it's kind of stalling, but I think if I were looking to buy this here, I'd be way more comfortable buying a breakout of 66 versus buying anything here or just wait for a retracement down to the 58 level before buying Zach's rank number one strong buy ag co brooks automation is the next one so they provide you know automation services for different markets um semiconductor is a big part of them and uh life science is, is another one so two major areas of the market for them and this is just beautiful um, they, they're in a positive trend. They come back to touch the 50-day moving average. You get an oversold condition on the commodity channel index, crosses the zero line, it goes higher. <clears throat> this has happened multiple times. Happened in late January. Happened again in April. Very nice chart here. Everything looking good. Today, a little bit of selling. <clears throat> um, after hitting a new 52-week high, Something to be maybe a little concerned about, not too bad, okay? So that's Zach's rank, number one, strong buy, strong buy, rather, Brooks Automation. Couple other stocks I wanna look at here, then I'll let you go, but this Brooks is just gorgeous. That's CNTY, Century Casinos. 
there have been a lot of gaming stocks that have popped up on my radar. This is probably among the smallest of them, which is good. It can provide you know a pretty decent opportunity for anybody brave enough to roll the dice, so to speak. <laughs> oh man, I kill myself. Roll the dice on the casino stocks. So you see here, sort of a double top getting put in December into January. That happens to be the same level where you get congestion early on here in mid-April. So I guess later on in April. Um, big spike up today. This looks like a decent breakout here. You can buy this here. You can put your stops south of this area of volume and sort of contention here where it fought on through. I think it's a, a decent way to go. You could also play sort of like a fib in here but that probably takes you right around to where you are anyway. So basically buying the breakout here on Century Casinos, ticker CNTY. The last stock I got for you, but certainly not the least, is Exelixis. Say that 10 times fast. They're a biopharmaceutical company engaged in the discovery of uh, new drugs. So they've got a couple of drugs here they're working on big time. Um, and hopefully, you know, these are going to be continue to be promising. Nothing moves like biotech. I'm telling you, this was a stock that a year ago was four dollars, and now it's twenty three. Has had a few really nasty sort of retracements that have taken place. Look at these patterns sort of develop where you get lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, boom, then it breaks. Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, boom, then it breaks. Similar scenario just happened. Lots of lower highs, starting to break up. Maybe stalled a little bit here at this recent 52-week high, but it is the Zach's rank number one strong buy. So what that tells me is you're constantly getting earnings estimates pushing to the upside, which should be a big time shot in the arm for this stock over the intermediate to long term. All right, so that's all I got for you here today. Remember, you can follow me. That's at Bartosiastics on Twitter. B-A-R-T-O-S-I-S-T-I-C-S. -S -S, at Bartosiastics. So you can check out all of the videos I do here with Dave's Daily Dives, among various other things I do for Zach's, including my Zach's Live Trader momentum trader and home run investor so thanks so much for hanging out with me here today on dave's daily dive have a good one